Welcome back to the Ministry Talk podcast, where we talk about all aspects of ministries, uh, both good and bad. Uh, we are continuing the conversation with the five-prong approach to evangelism uh, that Pastor Howe has introduced in the previous episodes uh, that we've talked about here on the podcast. Uh, today, we're going to continue uh, with talking about outreach, but in on the media side, in media evangelism. Uh, the importance of it, right way to do it, wrong way to do it, whatever it is, uh, we're going to continue the conversation here. So Pastor Al, if you don't mind, uh, just start with some uh, thoughts on media evangelism. Why is it a part of your five-prong approach to evangelism as uh, we start the conversation? Sure, I'd be glad to. So I believe that this particular series, this or this um, uh, this episode, will probably get some of the most kickback and some of the most intriguing. Those who are younger will probably jump back into the conversation with questions and like, hey, how can we do this? And those who perhaps are older, um, not to just make two delineations, older would be like, that sounds that sounds like that cannot be godly in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> all right, There seems to be two extremes in the media side of things. Yeah. And we have to decide, first of all, is technology and using technology, is it wrong? Is it inherently sinful? And I believe if you look at the word of God, you have to come to the conclusion that no, it is not inherently sinful. Sure. I am old enough to remember the big fight over screens in churches and people would just preach about it. And it was like, bless God, only those churches that have hymnals, please God. And if you put it on a screen, then authentic worship can't take place. God is not honored. And uh, everyone knows that anything printed is better than anything on the screen. <laughs> and uh, then it happened with, you know, Bibles and, and phones and like, bless God, I'm going to carry my Bible to church. And if you carry it on your phone, then you are nothing but a pagan and you don't love God. You're and, and, and I'm fine if you use a hymnal. I'm fine if you use a screen. I'm fine if you carry your Bible to church. I have my Bible in the pulpit with me. And... Uh, I also have my Bible on my phone. So we have to answer the question, is this inherently wicked? I would say no, but with the right approach, like what is the purpose of this? Then we can use it to the glory of God to further the message of the gospel. And uh, eventually we'll get into like the history of why we're on this this whole path and, and uh, probably uh, probably irritate, not irritate, but probably worry worry some of people along the way. So with the thought or conversation with media, why do you feel, Pastor Hal, at least for our church, that media is important for us to use here? Okay, let's just jump into it, right? Yeah, media. Yeah, sure. what, what do we do, first of all? So at First Baptist Church, we are on live stream. That is not uncommon. Most churches now are on live stream yep. because of the pandemic. Uh, we have kept our live stream. Some churches have canceled their live stream because people ought to be in church. I agree. 100%. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is the, the way to, that we ought to worship is in church, in person. Yeah. But reality says sometimes people are sick. Mm-hmm. Sometimes yeah. people are housebound. Yeah. And so uh, the, the, my brothers are like, well, people will use it as an excuse. They will. Yeah. Yeah. They will. And so they'll use their golf, they'll use sports, they'll use sickness, <laughs> yeah. and they'll sure. use anything else. If people are looking for an excuse from church, mm-hmm. like, well, you just make it easy for them. Okay. It's a different conversation. <laughs> so we have live stream. We're on TV every every Sunday morning. We're, I think, in 30... 36 or so plus counties in Michigan, uh, 8.30 broadcast. And then we're on on Facebook, we're on Instagram and YouTube, and we try to take advantage of all of those. And a few years back, we did a really big push for social media. And Pastor Ryan here, he'll talk about that in a little bit. And so in my heartbeat, this is, this is when I was just developing these five prongs. My heartbeat is, how do we touch the world for Jesus Christ? <laughs> and I look at the Apostle Paul, and Apostle Paul went everywhere, trying to talk to as many people as he could in order to communicate the gospel. Mm -hmm. And he went to Mars Hill. All right, he went to synagogues where people were at. Well, I stepped back and said, well, where are people at now? And I'll tell you one place where they're at. They're on their phones. That's right, right. yeah. (laughs) And so how do we get to their phones where they're at? And so from that, uh, we kind of went down a path. And what what we did is is, uh, we hired a marketing company. And right there, all right, there are those <laughs> pastors who are like, Brother Owl, uh, you are on the dark side. They just turned off the podcast. They're they just, done. They're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and some of you are like, who, who'd you hire? What happened? <laughs> I'm here to tell you, we spent a whole heap of money. I had mentioned the guys, I want to find a company that's not your mom pop operation. Mm-hmm. And they came back with a company that was a high powered company that had, had advertised for BMW. And the point of that was not that they would tell us what to say, mm-hmm. but we with them said we have the message that's defined from the word of god can you get it on the phones in front of people and in front of households like can you get the message and make it broader we have the truth but but everywhere else they turn to for information 
And so we, we went down this path, and at first, this company did not want to partner with us. Uh, the, the owners of this company or the, the, the main people there are Christians. I think it was Pastor Ryan that had a conversation with them, and they said, we don't partner with churches. And I believe you said something to the effect of, well, Pastor Howell has just been finishing a series on stewardship, and uh, he has challenged us to use every talent we have for the glory of God. And you guys have this talent, we think you ought to use it for the glory of God. Yes, Do I have yes, that right? Sir. Yes, sir. And if I'm not mistaken, they called back and said, yeah. we'd like to partner yes, with sir. you. Yep. And uh, from that, we kind of worked down this path, and the Lord has been very gracious. Now, the point of media for us is to pave the way. Yeah. It's, in a sense, brand recognition so that when someone gets in trouble, when someone gets hurt, um, when someone gets a gospel track, when someone meets a church member, they hopefully will say, I know that church. Why is it that McDonald's, who is a household name, which is a household name, spends over a billion dollars with a B, and yet we would all say we know McDonald's. They, they know the value of getting in front of people. Yeah. In fact, two weeks ago, a lady came that was out soul winning. She went to a house and she knocked on the door. She shared her last night in church, right? Mm-hmm. And, and she said, knocked on this door and the man said, I know that church. Mm-hmm. I know that pastor. He does those little, those little videos on Facebook. And I think she, he said something even kind, like, oh, I like that guy. Or I like yeah. that young guy, something like that. And he wants to come visit. Mm-hmm. Now, it would not have happened without her going to the door, sure. but yeah. it would not have been positive or as positive without the media yeah. presence. So that's just going to nutshell. Uh, some of you clicked me off. Some are like still <laughs> locked in. So from there, let's keep on going. Yeah. So uh, as you talked about Pastor Ryan and social media, mm-hmm. in our day and age, so, social media is so massive. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and Pastor Al, as you mentioned, trying to reach those people at their phones, social media is a great way to do that. Sure. Mm-hmm. So Pastor Ryan, if you want to give just uh, some input of what you do with social yeah. media and how maybe you feel it could be beneficial for churches as well. Absolutely. I think one thing we have to think about, a lot of people want to have a discussion about whether or not Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all these places, whether people should be on there, which mm-hmm. is a discussion worth having. But that's not discussion we're having today because the truth is there. Just like Paul wasn't wasn't wondering whether these people should be at Mars Hill or should be worshiping these yeah. false gods. He just knew that's where they were, so he would go reach them where they are. And that's kind of our goal is to reach people where they are. And, I mean, it is astounding how many people are on social media and how much time people spend on social media. It is, it is absurd. But if they're going to be there, let's reach them with the gospel, Mm -hmm. right? And we've been able to do some really cool things uh, from brought our Facebook page from about a thousand followers. Uh, Now we're over 30,000 followers in just about a year, a year's time and all glory to God. He allowed us to do that. Um, But those people are now hitting on the reason why I think we should do it. We have these 30,000 people that God has now given us influence in their lives, right? So when they get on social media, they're going to see videos from us. They're going to see posts from us. They're going to see our live stream. And I believe we can have a huge impact on our community in that way. I mean, we, uh, I'd love it if we did, but we don't have 30,000 people come to church (laughs) on Sunday, right? And, uh, but we do have, have those people on social media that'll follow us. When we post up one of these, uh, one minute, one minute reels, it'll have thousands of people immediately see that video, immediately watch it. Um, and I think it's something that it's, it's only going to be glorifying to God to get his name out there, right? There's a lot of other things we could use it for. There's a lot of other things people do use it for. Um, but to use it to bring glory and honor to God, I think is a great thing. And we as churches should be utilizing the tools that we have at our disposal. I, one thing I told the company that we talked to, I said, I truly believe that if Paul were alive today, he would use social media to reach people for Christ because he utilized every single tool at his disposal. He did everything he could. He said he was all things to all men. Uh, and not that we cross the line into, into sin or into anything that would displease God, but that we're willing to do whatever and go wherever if it means getting the gospel to people. Yeah. And I would encourage anyone listening, anyone out there, to find a way that you and your church can use media uh, to reach people. Uh, with that, in, in media evangelism, and I've seen a couple of things that I know we'll get to in a second, uh, but Pastor Al, to, to encourage pastors, um, and I know we have so many examples, and even our church family and the testimonies that they've been giving on how media has opened a door in conversations mm-hmm. with people that they come across. A great uh, testimony I have, and the Lord is so gracious here, uh, just pumping gas two days ago, I gave a track to the guy who was in the next pump to me, and very similar, as we've heard so many times here in the last year at our church, 
I saw you guys on TV. Like, I've seen you on TV. I was like, that's awesome. And I told him, hey, now you can come see us live, right? That was my encouragement for him. (laughs) But how can we encourage pastors who maybe are a little weary or maybe a little afraid or might not even know how to jump in on the encouragement on why is media evangelism so important because of the doors it can open? So what am I answering? Uh, So just an encouragement to them on maybe... Uh, or how can you encourage them to say, yeah, dive in? Oh, this is important. Sure, sure. Yes, dive in. It's important. I <laughs> promise you. <laughs> so it, I, end of the day, you have to decide. Everyone has to be fully persuaded in their sure, own sure. mind. Yeah. Some people, their conscience will not let them bear witness of, of doing this stuff. That's fine. I'm not going to fight them. For us, it's been a huge help. I would encourage you to do anything you can. Mm. It cannot be just a, hey, let me dump 100 bucks toward this event on Facebook and, and no one came. Boy, what a waste. <laughs> it is a long-term, like when we pass out tracks and we go out soul winning, we know that that's sometimes we see instant success, sure. but often it's just a long-term steady dedication to the cause of Christ. We run buses, right? Why? Do we expect that every single person who comes to church next week will now join the church and now be a <laughs> pastor? I'd hope that's the case, but it's long-term investment. Sure. I think social media and media is the same way, long-term investment. For for me, what it went back to partly was before I became pastor, there's another pastor who has since passed on, and he really encouraged me in this way. He said, JD, pastor your community. Like pastor an area bigger than your church. And that stuck with me. Yeah. Right. And so and brother Ryan, you know, like on our social media, we are trying to touch local people. Yeah. We're looking absolutely. for local followers, local. I'm not looking for national worldwide castle building. I'm looking for kingdom building, which is God's kingdom. Sure. And so I want these people and, and the Lord has been gracious. We've had many interactions. That story can be repeated. The guy walked in the church a few months back, handed me a set of flowers for a funeral and goes, Oh, I know you. I've I've watched you on TV. Mm-hmm. Well, then from there, I'm like, hey, here's a track. Come back and visit us on a Sunday morning. A lady walks into a store recently. She's wearing a First Baptist Church sweatshirt. The lady at, behind the counter says, I know that. I've watched on TV. <laughs> lady gave her a gospel tract and said, come to church to visit. Sure. So we've seen countless stories, not glory to us, but to God, that just paved yeah. the way. And, it, and here's the deal. Remember the five prongs. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't excuse us from personally building relationships Absolutely. and having other ministries. It For can't sure. be just like, I'm just going to just go on Facebook and that's it. I'm gonna, the church is going to be built. Yes. It's just one avenue. We're that's trying right. to touch people and help them where they're at. Um, so God's been gracious mm-hmm. to us. And I think that, that might be a misunderstanding. People who are turned off to it at, the, at first is the fact that we're not trying to replace door-to-door soul winning. Oh, we're no, not no, trying no. to replace bus ministry. We're not right. trying to replace any of those things. We think it, they're all important to do, and this is just something, if anything, that's going to support those things, right? So that now when you go door-to-door in soul owning, you're going to be talking to people who understand who our church is, and even more important, hopefully have an understanding of who God is, right. and have heard some of these some of these videos that we put out. So yeah, we're not trying to replace those things. No. Those are those no. are important. All five prongs are important, and hopefully if you've been listening through the, the recent episodes, you'll understand that we believe all those things are important. And this is just another tool, another tool that we need to use. One thing it has done for <coughs> our church members and for me personally is opened up doors with mm-hmm. people. Yeah. Yeah. I would submit that maybe 10, 15 years ago, the front door of the church was a website. Mm-hmm. Now the front door of the church is your media presence. Mm-hmm. Sure. Many people have come to church, have watched previous weeks. Yeah. They've watched me either on TV or on live stream. Yeah. And they want to see what is this church about? What does it look like? And also out witnessing and inviting people to church, it has been a great tool. Many of our church yeah. people have mentioned this. They'll talk yeah. to somebody and they're like, I don't have to come to church. And they'll be like, hey, watch it on TV. Watch it 8.30 Sunday morning. And people have done that. And it's just been one more way. In fact, the very first Easter we were on for Easter broadcast, I think on three stations <laughs> that year, uh, my wife, who is in the public school, she's a teacher in, in, in Saginaw, she encouraged her coworkers, and, and many of them watched that particular Easter broadcast. And one of them sent back... Uh, tell your husband, great job. He rocked the, the, the Easter mass. All right. <laughs> now that was their context yeah, of yeah. what they thought yeah. it was. Sure. But they also watched the entire broadcast, heard the gospel clearly. Hey, yes. And because Doreen, my wife could now use a tool to say, listen, maybe you're too scared that time. It was during the pandemic that first time to come to church, but would you watch this as well? And so it's been a great tool for us and yes. for our members mm-hmm. to, to help get the gospel out and to pave the way for them. I know I, I've talked to numerous people who, at least at this point in, in their life, would never come to our church, but watch us often. Is that your oh, wife? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, and they, they, they watch us on TV, and they watch us on live stream, and uh, 
And we've seen some of those people end up Mm -hmm. coming to church. You know, that is cool. Uh, This might be a maybe deeper conversation, (laughs) or maybe it could be another episode on the podcast. But I know uh, in conversations I've had with younger pastors or even older pastors, uh, and this, you know, Brother Matt and Pastor Howell and Pastor Ryan, you guys can jump in on this one. Uh, There is some fear there for any pastor on man, I would love to do this, just have no idea how to do this. Yeah. Or I would love to start live stream, no idea what I'm doing. Um, and they have the heart to do it well, but there's a fear there. Sure. Um, I'm going to assume, Pastor Hal, uh, that there was a fear maybe when you jumped into this on, because I know your heart working with you for 14 years now, you want things to be done well. Sure. Um, and I know there's so many pastors out there that want to do this and want to do it well, but have no idea on how to do it. So, Pastor Ryan, maybe you can give tips on yeah. social media. Uh, you know, Pastor Ryan, you can talk maybe about live stream or, you know, other different types of media that we do here. But maybe what are some things that you can help them with? Well, and I will tell you, like a year and a half, two years ago, I can tell you confidently, I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> at all. I can tell you confidently, he had no idea what he was doing. I had doing. no idea what I was doing. And, and pastor, pastor paid for some classes that I was able to take that really helped. And so there might be some things you can do like that. But I'll tell you right now, you contact us and help. Uh, we, we would love to help you and uh, avoid making the mistakes we made and help you uh, maybe learn some of the things that we learned. It took us longer to learn and we can help you learn them very quickly. Uh, don't feel... Don't feel hesitant to reach out to us. Um, and then also just do what you can. I think probably mm-hmm. the best way to learn how to do something is just, just simply start doing it. And uh, yeah, you're going to look back like on things you did six months ago and be like, wow, that was horrible, <laughs> right? And yeah, that was horrible. That yeah. was awful. <laughs> but as, as you move forward, you're going to get better and better at what you're doing. So I'd say just jump in. If that means at first you're just using your phone yeah. to make – to make reels, then hey, use your phone to make reels. Uh, one one suggestion I have is they you can get pretty inexpensively. You can get these things called ring lights, and you you put your phone on there, and it helps with some of the lighting and stuff. And uh, a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of social media influencers even just use AirPods for their for their mics. Right? They're they're pretty good quality. Obviously, there's other things you could use, and maybe eventually you'll get some better equipment. But don't let the equipment lack of equipment. Uh, keep you from doing anything, right? Just just jump in and try to do something. And uh, some things that I would say to get on, if you're not on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, get get on those platforms and start building uh, as soon as you can. Uh, and like I said, reach out to me. It may be a completely different episode because I, I could probably talk about some methods of how to do this for, for an hour, you know, but mm-hmm. uh, don't feel... Don't, don't be afraid to spend a little bit of money on the advertising. I know you say, well, we don't have a, a ton of money. It will start with doing what you can. And uh, like I said, give us a call with how to best use the money that you have uh, for advertising. But it does take some money sometimes. And I mean, as churches, we spend money on tracks. We spend money, most everything we do, bus ministry, right? You got mm-hmm. gas, you got the buses. Mm-hmm. There's there's money that's spent on everything we do. And I will tell you for um, social media advertising, Honestly, it's inexpensive for what you get out of it, right? The number of people you can reach with $200 on social media, you can't reach that many people with $200 anywhere. I don't like there's no method that you can reach the vast number of people you can on social media with as little money as you can on social media. But you also can't just expect to put up a post with you have zero followers and somehow people are just going to see this. Like it is going to take some work to build those pages, uh, get your church members to share things and spend a little bit of money on those ad on the advertising, um, side of it. But if you do that, I really think you're going to see, um, you're going to see awesome things from it. And like pastor said, you need to be conscious. Like the goal is not like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to run some Facebook ads for a month and we're going to have 30 new people in our mm-hmm. seats. That's not how, that's not really how any of our, any of the ministries work, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's slowly over time. We're seeing fruit now yeah. from things that we've been doing for a year. Right. Yeah. And, and we're starting to see some of that fruit uh, in four church years. four years. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But some of the things that we've been doing, uh, it, 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 it takes time for it to start like, people start showing up in the seat. But even more than that, um, 
you can reach people with the gospel on social media. Uh, you can start paving the way for people and any way that we can get God's word into people's into people's homes. I mean, I, I've thought before, like if I could, if I could just go up to any pastor and say, Hey, this week I could get you into 8,000 people's homes and you can share the gospel with them. Hmm. No pastor is going to turn that down. I mean, the only thing that would, would hinder them is time, right? Like how can I possibly talk to 8,000 people right. going, but with social media, you can do that. You know, you can do things that, uh, people like Paul, uh, couldn't do. He he couldn't get into 8,000 different people's individual homes. I mean, even people like Charles Spurgeon, I mean, he, he was innovative. He did a lot of, a lot of really cool things, but he couldn't get into 8,000 people's individual homes. You can, you can make a video this week and get into 8,000 different people's homes who wouldn't come to your church otherwise. And so I believe you just start just jumping with both feet and uh, do the best you can and reach out to us. We'd love to help you out. I think what's awesome about, um, about technology really is that it doesn't really matter what your budget is. Like there's something out there sure. <laughs> that yeah. you can find and that you can use. I sure. mean, pr pretty much everybody these days has a smartphone and if that's all you got, then go ahead and use it. I know like before I was interning here at, at, uh, at, at, at first Baptist, I was working at a smaller church, you know, it's about, it's about a hundred people. And you know, that's all that we used. We just had a smartphone and we used that to record the sermons and then from that sermon, you just make a couple short reels, and then we would take those reels and throw them on uh, social media. Uh, we put them on YouTube, we put them on Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that. So there's there's simpler things you can do that aren't gonna you know you're not gonna waste all your time on it. But you know you already preach a sermon every single yeah, week. Exactly. Just take that sermon. You can easily just find a couple just short clips from that and just throw those online. Um, you know, and for us, every, any, anytime we had an event or anything like that, you know, we'd always put it on Facebook. And, you know, a, a lot of times, like Pastor Ryan was kind of saying, a lot of times I would put it on there and we didn't see anything happen. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, one time we had, a, we, had a, we had a friend day coming up and I just made, I spent like five minutes, just put, it, put an event on Facebook and a family ended up coming that saw that post and the the the, uh, the the husband was already saved, but the wife ended up getting saved, and they joined the church through That's that. Cool. Yeah, you know, yeah. and if I had you know said to myself, oh well, these don't work, and had stopped posting, they might not have seen right. that, and might not have heard sure. the church uh, heard of the church otherwise. So I mean, there's there's always something that you can do, even if it's something simple. And then um, you know, as as you go, you can learn more and kind of upgrade your 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 stuff and move 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 uh, move move forward that way. But you know, even if all you got is a smartphone, hey, go ahead and start using it. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. And I, the good thing, the good news is God and Pastor's been preaching about this uh, last night. He preached a sermon along these lines, but. God's blessing and the results that he chooses to give us is not based on our ability, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I am not like nobody, nobody that knows me would say like, I'm a techie person or like <laughs> smart with, <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not smart with computers or, or tech or any of that, but God has blessed what we're doing yeah. Amen. and, yeah. uh, and praise the Lord that his blessing on what we do as a ministry is not, um, dependent upon me being good at, at, at what I do. Now, we should always try to be better and I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to get better, but ultimately it's not it's not your ability. Don't be scared of like just like soul winning, just like you as a pastor would probably tell anybody in your church, don't be scared about going out soul winning. Like you you can go with someone else at first, but ultimately it's just a matter of obedience mm. and God will bless what you're doing. Amen. Yeah. The same is true in this and uh you may be scared, you may be like, "Well, I'm not very good at this." Well, praise the Lord. God loves using weak people. God loves using people who aren't good at, at, at things. So just jump into it, and God, God's the one that's going to bless it. Amen. Um, one of the uh, craziest times here at First Baptist Church, which I know was true for a lot of churches, was during COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, and the world changed during that time. <laughs> and I know our ministry changed during that time as well. Sure. Um, but one of the amazing things that came from that was our TV broadcast ministry. And we have given some examples even in this episode of where the Lord is using that ministry uh, to impact people's lives and to bring mm -hmm. people here to First Baptist Church. Uh, Pastor Al, if you want to give uh, maybe a little insight on why you felt the Lord wanted you to start that TV broadcast ministry. Um, 
and then just share that as an encouragement to pastors who might be thinking about it and say, sure. you know what, First Baptist did it, let's do it. Mm. I think yeah. it'd be an encouragement to them. During COVID, how we got on TV, it was coming up to Easter that first during the pandemic, if you know anything about a pandemic. Uh, <laughs> and one of the guys about three weeks out or so, uh, somewhere in that time frame, said, hey, what if we were on TV on Easter? And um, I'm like, hey, why not? I'm, an I- sure. I'm not afraid of ideas. No. <laughs> I tend to be an idea guy. I'm like, call the station to find out. Came back, sure, you can get on Easter. For enough money, you can do anything. And so I said, let's do it. And so the Lord, it was, it was very clear, we got to reach more people that first mm-hmm. Easter. And so we put together in just three weeks or so, uh, just a, a TV broadcast. I shudder to even watch that first one now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh boy, I hope it's not out there in public because it's not not our finest work. But but a, but a great a great entry. The Lord used that in incredible ways around the country. Uh, that night, I read some emails from people that that said I sat down with my brother in law who was never the gospel. And they got saved the day, and the Amen. Lord the wow. Lord blessed that. Yes. After that first broadcast the uh, station came back and they said, do you want a weekly, a weekly time slot? And so we inquired what the cost would be and it appeared that it would be something that we could afford. Some people gave generously to help that happen. Uh, and then my other thought was, I don't want to increase the workload here. Like, how can we do this inside of what we're doing? And so the first few weeks were quite crazy. And I think at that time you were editing all those mm-hmm. TV broadcasts. And I think the first few times, maybe three to six hours yeah. the first few times. And then now Brother Abraham does, but I think when you hand it off, you're about an hour and a half mm-hmm. total. So you take this, this, the current sermon that I did that. And, and it's not live. It's very difficult to do something live on TV. Mm-hmm. And so we are about a week, two weeks behind. They record typically all of my sermons in case I go off the reservation on something. They're like, yeah, I'm not putting that on TV. And, <laughs> <laughs> which every week. Uh, so they'll take that, edit it down. And so I wanted to use something that we already had, not increase the workload. Mm-hmm. And then now that it's there, once it's done, then we had that first station. Now we're on other stations and the product's already there. It's just a matter of uploading it different places. And so the Lord kind of dropped in our lap. We, we I prayed about it, asked for God's wisdom, talked to some men who have done this in the past. Mm-hmm. They said, what will happen, Pastor, is that eventually people will watch your service and they'll adopt you as their church. <laughs> mm-hmm. And this actually happened yeah. this Easter where some people came into church and uh, they asked, well, is this your first time here? And they were kind of abrupt and no, this yeah. is our church, we're here. Yeah. And we didn't recognize them. And they said, no, well, we watch you every Sunday on TV. Yeah. yeah. And and they were a little bit surprised that we didn't know that they were watching personally every Sunday. Sure. Yeah. And, and we don't know who watches every Sunday. We know how many, but not who. Um, but I thought, what, what, a, what a neat thing that God that God did. It's not, it's, and it's not about us. It's not about, and I guess that's what I'd say to pastors. Um, if you think that you're going to like jump on the media and then all of a sudden the church will explode, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Sure, sure. Like mm-hmm. it's a wrong purpose. And if you think, hey, I went on social media and nothing happened, I'm, I'm out. That's also a wrong purpose. Yeah. If I go in a gospel tract and, and that person doesn't receive Christ and refuses it, I don't quit handing out gospel tracts. Sure. Like, well, that wasn't effective. Yeah. Right. I'm out here. Yet in these other years, that's kind of our response. If I don't yeah. see instant results or if I get a negative result, sure. I'm out. Mm-hmm. Um, rather than let me just be faithful and diligent uh, and labor. Yeah, I think the awesome encouragement, um, seeing this entire process to the point where we're at now, has been that we've just taken what the Lord, we've just taken what we do on a weekly basis, and now just put it in the eyes of more people with technology that was already out there. Mm -hmm. We're taking the truth from God's word, uh, the gospel, and we're just sharing that with everybody else. Mm. Um, we're not trying to do anything fancy, anything special, anything tricky or, you know, uh, publicity or anything like that to bring people in. It's just this is who we are and we're able to put that out there. And I think for the pastors that I've talked to in your cities, in your communities, in your states and wherever you're at, just take what you're already doing and yeah, use right, that. Right, right. Well, that's yeah. what that's that's one of the advantages we have as churches. Remember the marketing company that we worked with? They were kind of astounded by how much content we had, <laughs> but then they came to a realization like we're not like BMW. BMW sells cars for for a living. That's what their business does, and they have to come up with some sort of content <laughs> for their social media. We already have content. I mean, you're writing three sermons a week yeah. at mm-hmm. least, right? Yeah. And we're we already have content. Uh, that we are creating. So it's just a matter of, okay, now we have all this content. How do we get it to people? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Some more. So, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and you would be surprised, for those of you listening, pastors, um, as Brother Matt uh, said that he did at the church that he was working at prior, 
how many clips you can get from one of your pastor sermons or oh, yeah. your yeah. sermon that you're preaching. Yeah. You know, how many reels and things you can you can come up with from that. Right? Zero. Zero, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that was terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, pr- preaching like Pastor Hal does, three messages a week, there's so much content there that you can share. 100%. Yeah. Um, and that can be an encouragement because we don't know what anybody's going through. And for a reel to come across their feed, yeah. right, that... Wow, that can grab their heart because God's word can do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the greatest encouragements that I've tried to give pastors who I'm having these conversations with mm-hmm. and trying to help them with this. It's just use the truth that you have and that we believe we have mm-hmm. and just use that I- inside of your media, which I think would be so encouraging. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Pastor Hal, if you want to share maybe a short thought or an encouragement from God's word, maybe regarding media evangelism or just something that the Lord's put on your heart. Sure, I appreciate that. And let me just read it at one point. If you have any questions, yeah. if you have a need, please reach out. Yeah. Uh, one reason, I, we, Brother Ryan, I talked about this early on, I told the staff, why we're going on this path is maybe we can help other churches. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can learn some things and save them money that we perhaps spend, we needed to spend, and help you like kind of isolate what's going on, live stream. Yeah. We have people who can do these things and, and save you thousands of dollars just with some some answers. So if you can, if mm-hmm. you need some help, have a question, don't hesitate to call, mm-hmm. reach out. If we can help, then I would love to, to allow yeah. these guys to do that. And uh, <laughs> Help me. <laughs> not me. I'm not going to help you. Sure. These guys help you. And uh, so yeah, j- just one thought. I shared it kind of last night. Best friend, we're talking about this, how God blesses. And God blesses sometimes independent of his children, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes God just, he's God and he does his own thing. And we love that about God, that even when we're against him, while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. And God works independent of us. And I love that part. Yeah. But often and usually, typically, God works dependent on his children. Sure that he blesses the right actions, the right path. Mm -hmm. Blessing does not equal right path, though. It's not uh, um, success-driven theology. It's theology-driven success. Mm -hmm. But God does say, if you seek me, you'll find me. If you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. I give you a blessing and a curse. And and choose, choose life, choose godliness, choose me. And if you follow my path, whatsoever man soweth, that shall we also reap. And so we have to remember that in these things, we're just trying, we're just trying to follow the Lord. Yeah. And that, and that follow the Lord in this way, trying to reach everyone we possibly can yeah. with the yeah. gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Trying to pave the way in any way, shape, or form, not sinfully, but any other, any other method we can use to just help other people. And if it furthers God's kingdom, mm-hmm. that's what we're looking for. Yeah. We water plant, he gives the increase. Mm-hmm. And when he increases, we praise him for it. Yes. Yeah. If we see it, we get excited. But sometimes when we don't see it, we're like, oh, I must be doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. And it could be one reason. Or it could just be God says, listen, just be faithful. Yeah. Just stay with it. Keep on reaching people and ministering and sharing the gospel. And we may just see the increase in heaven. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, once again for joining us for this episode of the Media Talk Podcast. Uh, as Pastor Al mentioned, if there's anything we could ever do for you, if it comes to media or any of the other things we've talked about, please do not hesitate to reach out. Uh, Thanks again for joining us and God bless.